Okay, hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and uh, this gentleman was passing by and engaged me about Fukushima and radiation and the chemtrails, and he knows a lot. So I asked him if he would mind being interviewed, and my usual three questions, and he said, no problem. So, this is the first thing. So what's your name, sir? My name's Daryl. Daryl. So the first question is, what do you know about Fukushima? Um, I know Fukushima is the end of the world as we know it. It will completely change humanity if it doesn't extinct us. It happened on March 11, 2011 when a tsunami hit um, a reactor, in, a nuclear reactor in uh, Fukushima Prefecture in Japan, causing damage to them with the tsunami. Particularly Reactor 4 is the dangerous one. There's about 1,300 spent fuel rods in there that are probably sitting somewhere like pickup sticks like this. We don't know that they're all standing straight. Um, it's in a building that has damaged um, integrity and uh, that there's been calculation that say if an earthquake of seven or greater hits that prefecture, then it will come down. It will be fission. It will be a reaction beyond Chernobyl and everything else that's ever happened. And it will literally extinct humanity and life as we know it. Um, it's been leaking since March 11, 2011, radioactive waste water into the ocean that has been killing life in the ocean. Um, and actually, at this point, I am grateful that it's going into the ocean and not to the atmosphere since the ocean is our biggest filter. It's killing it and it will recover eventually. Humanity may not, um, but it, it's happening right now. Um, Pacific salmon is no longer safe. I know in 2012 they caught 15 bluefin tuna off the coast of California that were all radioactive and the reason that they were ahead of the curve is because they're a big swimmer. They spawn off the Sea of Japan and they swim across and that's how they're ahead of it. I know the massive radiation is flowing with the Japanese current, I can't remember the name of, um, that's getting close to Japan and within the next two years, um, by 2016, the Pacific Ocean is going to be done. Um, from there, what happens, I don't really know. I mean, there's a, a lot of conjecture. I, I would like to believe that there's some kind of awakening or something happens, but right now there's nothing that can be done about it. Their, their ploy that they're going to take them out one at a time is, is, is crap. They haven't done enough study. I don't trust what TEPCO has to say or anybody from that you know, entity or those entities at this point. Um, I know they took out one case and that was like a big accomplishment, but there hasn't been enough of a, this is the global. This is the global. This isn't Japan. This isn't Asia. This is the global catastrophe. Like, right. this is the biggest as it gets. This is the nuclear stuff. The stuff we never should have been messing with. Right. We should have listened to Nikola Tesla. That's what we should have right. done. But that's a whole other ball game. You probably should go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep Don't going. Don't keep going on Tesla. I uh, know. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, what do you know about Hanford? I know it's a nuclear facility here in Oregon. three months so I don't really know a lot but I am aware that it's there I know it's in a in, it's I know they're all built they're all built in places where they shouldn't be um, like the, the ones especially in the middle of the United States on the Madrid they're they're just waiting to happen it's, it's okay. stupid part of me think feels like it's by design I, I don't like really, you know know where to go with that but just what they've done with that and I just I, that's about all I know about it okay and what do you know about radiation what does it do to the human body and well, to life well, it, it mutates all kinds of life, causes cancer, which is a mutation. It shortens life. Um, you know, radiation poisoning, it kills people. Um, and it can be a long, you know, or not necessarily long, but it's not a fun way to go. Um, you know, that's in a nutshell what I know about radiation. Okay. Well, let me give you some information while we're on the film, because I always like to hammer this home about Hanford. Hanford is separate from the Columbia Generating Station. And Hanford is the dump site where they poured all the nuclear waste from inventing the bombs. And so uh, the nuclear waste in Hanford is out of control. Bechtel illegally built 40 miles of trenches and dumped unlined highly radioactive contaminated waste that's seeping into the groundwater. 15 miles away from there is the Columbia Generating Station, sitting on top of what they have now discovered to be active 
earthquake faults. Yeah, see, that's why I knew that there was earthquakes right. there. I knew that there uh, But this is the scary part. It's only 15 miles away. So if there was an earthquake and something happened to the Columbia Generating Station, none of the maintenance crews that have to maintain that contaminated waste could get in there. So it is a catastrophic event, like it's the mega beast of all, I mean I know a lot of people think Diablo Canyon needs to be closed down, yeah. but I think the double whammy, I, frankly all the nuclear yeah. plants need yeah. to be shut down tomorrow, yeah. like today, right now, immediately, no more talking, shut them down, yes. let's don't, I mean they provide less than 5% electricity overall throughout the entire United States. You need bombs. I mean, yeah. I guess, and they need the jet so, fuel because they like think I they're going to escape before, to when Mars. We were talking about like the nuclear relation to fluoride and hex, and the fact that the fluoride that they use is coming from the nuclear industry. They might want to paint it and use the phosphate. Well, say that mining. again. That was very interesting. Well, there, well, you can look up Project F. Just search that. Um, the fluoride deception talks about it briefly, but it is a project where they actually—I I don't want to missay it—but it's uranium hexafluoride or something to that effect. It, the short name is hex. And the breakdown components are that are your sodium fluorosilicates, like the hydrofluorosilic acid that they use in fluoridated water. They pretend, in my opinion, this is me and maybe I'm crazy, I don't know, but they, and Project F says I'm not, but they <laughs> pretend like it's, um, it's coming from the phosphate mining industry and that it's, it's, it's still nuclear race, mind you, the fluoride that they're using. It's not pharmaceutical grade. In fact, if you ask them and demand, well, okay, you can put fluoride in the water, use pharmaceutical grade. They can't because they'll tell you what they use if they get it from, like, I, I know in Anchorage they got it from a place in Florida, mine, and they'll tell you it's 99% um, sodium sil silica fluoride, but they won't tell you what the other, 98, they won't tell you what the other 2% is. Strontium, aluminum. Wow. The mining. Think about mining. You know anything about mining? There's wow. There's other stuff coming up with it. Right. Just yeah. like Fukushima, they only test for cesium. Yeah. When really, even if the cesium is dissipated, we have strontium, we have, you know, tritium, yeah. we have plutonium, we have iodine-130 and 129. Well, yeah. 129, what, dissipates over a small, short period of time? But if you have iodine-130 and uh, 129 dissipates, you st or 130 dissipates, you still have 129. Yeah. So it's the insanity of it is... Well, yeah, and like you were saying, too, with the, with, with the chemtrails before, that was another thing. They're all fluoridated. They're playing, they're, it's strontium fluoride, right. aluminum fluoride, and barium fluoride. Wow. You know, they, they, when I say they, I choose to call it the corporation, and that goes into the whole birth certificate and the corporate slave. You know, you were born with a certificate of live birth. That we're, well, we're birth. assets on their balance sheet. That's well, very yeah, clear. We, well, I'm killing my straw man. I've got the documents, the affidavits to do it, and really? I, I plan to kill him. Because when they took your major birth certificate, you became a capitalized corporate slave, a debt slave. And every every document you've had the rest of your life, from your marriage license to your high school diploma to your doctor's medical license, they're all capitalized, which is in by law, in law, it's corporate, it's the corporatization of it. Which is why they charge us now for schools. Well, yeah, we as an example, you take driving and traveling. A lot of people think that you're driving is your right. Well, traveling is a right afforded to you by the Constitution. It's your natural right. It says travel unmolested. Okay. What they have done, the corporation has done, is they have tricked you into giving up your right and creating a privilege. You engage into a contract by getting a license, by getting a registration, by getting insurance. You're engaging into a contract that allows your right to travel as a free citizen become their privilege that they can take away to drive. Hmm. Black's Law Dictionary defines driving. Black's Law Dictionary is a source. It's a well-known, reputable source for it. It says that driving is committing commerce. Taxi drivers, they drive. They have to pay attention to the law of the road. Truck drivers, they're getting paid. If you have a vehicle, as an example, that's not for hire on it, and you're not engaged, not engaged in that contract, you have to kill your straw man first, they can't really do anything to you if you stand your ground. Actually, Google driving versus traveling. Okay, so now I'm really compelled to ask you one more other question. I know it's my usually three. But the question is, um, what do you think is our options in terms of stopping the monsters, stopping Godzilla from destroying the planet, if there's anything that... I mean, my this is why I'm out in the streets. I call my senators and congressmen regularly. I've been falsely investigated by the Capitol Police. 
for nothing, uh, which annoyed me because we wasted we the Eugene it. Police Department's the money. Of honor, you know. I guess, but it's annoying. It I mean, is. I felt like it was a misuse of Eugene, uh, my tax dollars here in Eugene, to have some detective investigating me. I'm a completely passive person. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is actually, what do you think is the solution? Where, what well, can I'm, we I'm do? Well, I'm going to steal a line from a great movie. It's called Natural Born Killers and Love Kills the Demon. Right. So I Get think, back like to I, like, love, like, right. Like I said before, like, um, you mentioned the word human. Right. And today in my life, I see human before I see anything right. else. That's right. That's the key. I don't think we, I don't think, I think humanity has lost that. I think we need to get back yeah, to so. love. I think we need to rebuild in America a sense of integrity, a sense of love. We are our brother's keepers. Yeah. And really, we got bombarded 10 years ago with the hate machine, the fear machine. And people have been hanging on to fear as if it's a, a noonie, well, you know. That's funny you say that. Fear is one of the two root emotions. Right. And fear begets hate. Right. And, be, and people are easily manipulated when they're in fear. That's why people don't come out, because they're afraid, quote, yeah. afraid. Well, see, at this point in my life, it's funny, I've told people, like, I don't have a choice. That's how I feel. I, I don't have, no have a choice. choice. If I didn't talk about fluoride, I'd be lying to myself. Right. If I didn't talk about chemtrails, the Federal Reserve, the, the, here's a great one, okay. In 1964, the last time we had real money, it was 90 quarters were 90% silver. In 1964, minimum wage was a buck and a quarter. Okay? If you had five 1964 dollars in your hand today, right now, it's between 20 and 25 dollars. Wow. The problem we have isn't a minimum wage problem, it's a money problem. We don't have money, we have currency. Right. Currency isn't money, it's what they're used to exchange. It doesn't hold a value. The only reason that the dollar exists today is because we got the biggest guns. It's true. And that everybody knows it's going. It's mathematical certainty. Which is why we have the radiation, fail. because they're going to keep the nuclear like power to keep I, there's their There's a part power. of me that wishes the, the proverbial shit would hit the fan. Well, it's because going it, to. It will wake people up. I don't think the dollar can last more See, than three I, this years. is the other thing, too. I don't think people have been asleep. I think people have been working their asses off, working hard to support their kids. They haven't been asleep. They have just, a lot of people know about Fukushima, they know about the chemtrails, they know about the fluoride. They are paralyzed with fear. They have no I, yes, way I, to move forward. I think they don't know what a, to do. I think the cognitive dissonance in, in America specifically is beyond anywhere else. I think it's almost coupled with, with Stockholm syndrome. Yes, it is. That's and what they, I said a long time they, ago. I they, agree. They, and I remember a few years ago talking about 9-11 with right. a friend of mine. And I will never forget her reaction. It was like, why is she did not why? She knew I was like one of the smart friends. I knew, you know, science and whatever kind of crap. And she did, she was, it was, and to me, it was a perfect example of that cognitive that you don't want waking up, taking the red pill doesn't care. Taking her, I mean, I, it's funny when I was walking up towards you, I almost thought, like, to say, I wish I took the blue pill. <laughs> you know, but at this point, being awake when you are and you have to, it's not an easy burden. Right, and well that's exactly right. It's not easy, because look at us. We're two people out on the street in an international protest against chemtrails in Eugene, Oregon, which is supposedly a, quote, activist city. Yeah, I, and yeah. so, when Kevin Blash was here last year, he was booed by activists. They told him they didn't like his language, because he causes a lot. It's funny, I, I actually really can drop him, and I do it grammatically correctly, but I try not to. I actually, <laughs> You know, I do. If you get me excited, I can't help that's it. That's the thing. Is when you know you what I mean? Excited, like, you have passion. It's, but I mean, that's just what happens. But uh, for me, I think the point is we need to encourage people to not be afraid. For those of us that step out, because it's like I told Kevin one time. I said, you know, the thing is, if it was up to humanity, we'd be sitting in the fucking caves. Nobody would have even started a fire. Somebody, you know, it takes that one person to start the fire. Well, they say a raw diet would be better for us anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Well, we may end up going that way, but... I think that, it's funny, I was, another thing I just need to bring up now that I'm on a, I got a soapbox of sorts Okay, here. good. Um, marijuana, cannabis, okay? Um, a lot of people don't know, I'm sure some people will. THCA, THC acid is what's in fresh green growing marijuana. If you were had a big plant right here that's full of buds and you ate the whole thing while it was fresh and growing, you're gonna end up with one hell of a stomach ache because there's a lot, of, a lot of fiber to be ingesting. Um, but you will not and cannot get high. There's, it's non-psychoactive when it's THCA. It has to be dried, cured, or heated. Okay, 
in its raw state, it is more beneficial than any plant that right. we have on earth. We should be eating salads with our masculine mix with marijuana leaves in them. It should be True. part buds should be part of our diet in its green state. There's a video on YouTube called Leaf. Look it up. It's 15 minutes long. It documents a girl who's in her late 20s with fibromyalgia, endometriosis, and lupus. She stay, she's on 20 something pills. Well, actually, I think it's more than that. I think it's like 40 pills a day. Um, bedridden. They tell her she's never going to live a full life. She's never going to have children. She starts juicing raw, right. non psychoactive just marijuana. And within four to six weeks, she's off all medication. She has a child within a year. I was actually just going to mention that. I just read an article plan. about juicing cannabis, raw cannabis, unprocessed cannabis. Well, that you it's won't get super cancer. Helpful. You will cure cancer. And it doesn't cure. get you high. It's not psycho. It's, it's not it's, psychoactive it's at all. Like, like me, food. I smoke marijuana. I'm not going to stop. I actually enjoy the ritual. Um, but I am way more interested in utilizing green. Well, I raw. mean, we. I mean, it was pretty obvious that the whole cannabis industry was killed by the oil industry. Well, not just the oil industry. Years. They're not True. okay. If we had hemp and cannabis, just hemp. Forget about cannabis. If hemp was legal, paper, lumber industry, paper, four acres of trees to one acre of hemp. Hemp is renewable yearly. Trees are not. There's no industrial waste from hemp. So they would kill lumber, paper, textiles, uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, Oil. Henry Ford's first car, frame and body, were made from hemp. You can take a hammer, whale the shit out of the side of that car, it doesn't dent. Do that with any one of these ones. Wow. Wow. Hemp, it, it is, to me, is the god plant. It should be utilized more, like building homes, everything. Hemp concrete's better. It's sturdier. It insulates better than concrete. Wow. There's so many industries that it would kill. I did And the not reason that. that it is, they did it was because of that. Wow. They don't want a healthy populace, and they have it for a long, long time. Wow. Since before 1871 and that, the Act of 1871. Uh, but they, give me a high five. <laughs> You're the <laughs> first person I know who knows about the Act of 1871. Okay, the rest of you, Google DCOA 1871. It's the story of your enslavement. It's when they incorporated America. It's when America became one of the three entities in the world, along with the Vatican and the City of London, that are separate, incorporated within the places that they reside. There's a reason and, for and that. And that's when we became assets on their balance sheet. Yeah, that's what incorporate. That's the, that is exactly wow. what I was talking about before. Tell me your name again. My name is Daryl. Daryl, really awesome. Pleasure. Awesome to meet you. Thank uh, you so much. You. Huh, I bye look bye. forward to seeing the video. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>